So recently I've been working on this page where I'm listing a lot of the resources that I've created over the years. So you can see I have YouTube videos here, I have PDF downloads that I've created, and I also have courses that I've created and sold. I'm consolidating all of these into a single place and I wanted to give people the ability to search and filter these really easily. So I have a search bar here where I can search for something like an API and that filters the list. And then I can also click on filter here to further filter down the list results. And in this video, I wanna show you how I set up this custom filtering inside of Glide. All right, so the first thing that I should probably note is Glide has some really easy searching and filtering built out of the box. So let me show you how to set that up. If you come here to the tabs and click on plus, you can do new page from data and I can select guides here. What this does is create a really simple list of all of my guides and I can format this to say a grid and I can adjust how things look as well. If I come to the collection, I can change different things about the list itself. So here in design, I can change the image size. I can change the aspect ratio to be more thumbnail like, and then I can also change the size to large. Now, as far as filtering and searching, this is built in out of the box. If I go to options for the collection, I can toggle on and off a search bar, which shows right here. So I can toggle that on and this allows me to search for API like I did in the demo. And then it also has filtering as well. So I can go to show filter and this is where I can filter on something like the guide type and I can filter on course, download, or video. If that works for you, great. You don't need to do anything custom like I'm gonna show you in the rest of this video. But let me show you a few roadblocks that I ran into. So for example, I can only specify one thing I want to filter by. So if I go to my collection, go to options, I can't, I can't pick glide or guide type and guide access. So if I want to filter on multiple things, I have to do something custom. So. That's what I want to show you how to do in this video. So if I come to guides, one thing you'll notice is that this page is built on top of a table called current user. This is so anybody logged in can use my custom filtering. So if I go to the data editor, you can see here I have this current user table and this has all the different things that I'm using to create these custom filters. So you can see I have a show filters, which is just a checkbox. I have search text, which is where they're typing in their search. And then I have a selected type, that's the type of guide and the selected tier. One important thing to note about all of these is that these are user specific, meaning that they are specific for everyone looking at the page. If this was unchecked, then when you looked at the page, you could enter search text, but then I would be able to see the same thing. So just make sure when you're setting this up that everything is user specific. All right, so now we have a page built on top of the current user. We have a simple hero section with some text in it. We have a collection with all of our guides. And then these two containers here are where the magic happens. So I'll get back to the search box here in a second, but if you want to filter, I have a filter button here that will show my filter section. The way that works is I have a button and when I click on that button, the action associated to it, zoom in here, is whenever we click on this, it's gonna set show filters to true. And we only show this button when show filters is not checked. So if it's not checked, we're going to check it. And if it is checked, we're not going to show it. And then this top container, if I go to that, we want to show this, we want this container to be visible when show filters is checked. Whenever I click on this, it's gonna show this section here. In this section, I have a simple title with a button, and then I have two choice components that have the different options. So the first choice will write to my selected type, which is that user specific field I just showed you for the current user and it's pulling from all the guide types in my guides table. So it's gonna grab all the different guide types, which is like video and download and course, and it's gonna show those here. So now whenever I click on one, it's going to populate it. And it's same thing for tier. This is a choice component that is looking at all of the guide access uh, options. 
and it's putting that in the selected tier. So let me go ahead and click on course and free. And then if I go back to the data, we can see that course and free are selected and I'm currently showing filters. That's how that works. Now to get our list to filter based off our selection, it's actually pretty simple. If we go to the collection itself and then go to options, you can see here that I've specified filters. So guide access, I'm saying only show guides where the access includes from our screen, the selected tier. So since we built this page on top of the current user, I can now reference the screen and then say only show guides where the selected tier matches the tier that's on the screen. And then same thing for guide type. We're saying only show guides where the guide type matches the greens selected type. So an important thing here is I am using includes instead of is, and that is because if I were using is, it basically would require that something is selected. So now that nothing is selected, it's not showing anything down here. And then once I select something, it shows it. Includes allows there to be basically an empty filter. And so make sure you use includes instead of is. And the last thing you might wanna do is add a clear filter to make it easy for them to remove all of their filters. And that is the button we have up here. And all that action does is whenever you do set column actions, it's going to turn show filters to false, clear value, and then I think I accidentally removed this earlier. It's going to remove the selected type and the selected tier. So now whenever we click on clear filters, it hides that section because that section only shows when show filters is checked and then also removes all of our associated filters. Now again, a collection does have a search built out of the box, but it doesn't really allow you to kind of control where it shows. I wanted to have basically full control over this. So I created my own custom search box. This is also helpful if you're ever trying to search for something here and Glide is not basically searching on that value. So if you have a big data set or a lot of columns or for some reason and Glide's not pulling it through, I'm gonna show you how to create your very own custom search box as well. So let me turn off the Glide search box. And the main thing here for this search is I wanted to specify the specific fields that I want it to be able to search on. So if I go to my guides table and scroll all the way over, you can see here that I've defined a search field. And this search field is just a template column that basically puts together the title, the summary, and the body of my guide. And it replaces that with the data that's in the actual table. And so now I can specify that whenever I enter something here, like API, this writes to the search text for the current user. So you can see here API. And then in my collection, if I go to options, I have this final filter that I've set, uh, which is very similar, I mean, exactly similar to what I did for the other filters. So here I'm saying the search field, remember, which that's what I just showed you, which includes the title, the summary, and the body only show guides where something in that search text field includes what the user has typed inside of the, their search text. And so that allows me to do something like this, where I can type in APIs or Wordle or JSON, all that I can do through here. So yeah, that my friends is how you can create some custom filters for your collections inside of Glide. And if you're interested in building cool projects like this, I definitely encourage you to come check out this site where you can see some of my favorite projects and resources. You can learn everything from how I quit my job to how to build an app in one week to how to make a game like Wordle inside of Glide and even how to send text or email notifications. All of it is here for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.